Hello everyone and welcome to a very basic introduction to test-driven development in iOS. We are just going to get started with creating very basic tests and that's why I'm using Playgrounds to write our first test. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be testing a bank account. So when we create the bank account, the balance will be zero and we should be able to deposit some money from the bank account. And I will also give you a challenge of creating a unit test which will be able to withdraw money from a bank account. So let's go and first import our XC test framework. This framework is responsible for allowing you to write unit tests. Now, since we are using test-driven development, we will have to write our failing test first. Then we will make sure that the test passes. And then, and only then, we can refactor it and start the loop again. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our test case class. So I'm going to go ahead and say bank account test. And I'm going to go ahead and inherit from XC test case, which is basically saying that this is a test case I'm writing. And that's that this test case is about the bank account test. So all the functions or all the tests that I'm going to write for testing the bank account will be inside this particular class. One of the things that you have to do to run your test is to say bank account test dot default test suite dot run. If you don't do that, then it's not going to run in the playgrounds. Okay, so what will be our first test? Well, the first test will be that we will be able to create an instance of the bank account. Okay, so function. The test should begin with the test keyword. So test underscore. And I would say create bank account. Okay, great. And now we can actually go ahead and write the code that will create a bank account. Keeping in mind that we don't really have any class or anything called bank account. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with saying bank account equals to bank account, which doesn't exist by the way. And now I can say xc assert and not nil bank account. XC assert not nil and XC assert equal, XC assert true and so many more are basically used to assert is to say that, okay, uh, I'm asserting that this is going to be not nil. And if this assert fails, if this is actually nil instead of not nil, then my test will actually fail. If it is not nil, then it will pass. Well, right now we have different issues because right now you can see that bank account is complaining that there is no such thing as bank account. So if I even try to run this, well, it's not going to even allow me to run because there is no such thing as a bank account class. So let's go ahead and create a structure. I will call it bank account. Great. And that should be enough to create the bank account. Let me go ahead and run this. And you'll see that right now we do have a bank account structure. So it should be able to run this test. And if you can see over here, executed one test, zero failures. Actually, our test has actually passed. Right over here, you can see that the test has actually passed. Now it's time for refactor. How can we make this test a little bit better? Well, one of the things that I see over here is that the name of the test or name of the test case as well as the name of the actual test can be improved. And I like my test to read like a story, like a business uh, story or a business task. So I can say something like over here, when creating instance of bank account, then should create instance successfully. You can see that it flows really nicely, right? So this is the actual context. So I'm saying when creating instance of bank account, should create instance successfully. Okay, now I can go ahead and change the bank account test to 
when creating a simple bank account and I can run. Now the great thing is that when the test passes or fail, you can actually see over here, you can read the whole test and you will exactly know which test has actually passed or which test has actually failed. So what else can we do? When creating instant the bank account should create instant successfully. Okay, that's fine. It has created instant successfully. And maybe we can test should have initial balance of zero. Okay, so when we're creating a bank account, the initial balance should be zero. So how about if I say create a new bank account, which is bank account equals to bank account. And then I will say XC assert. And this time I'm going to use the equal assert. I'm asserting that it will be zero. And what will be zero? The bank account balance should be zero. So dot balance. Well, guess what? There is no balance property on the bank account class or the structure. So I need to go over here and make sure that we add that property. So now this means that I can go over here and I can create a property called let balance equals to zero. Let's go ahead and run this now. So this means that if when we create the bank account, we will have the balance to be zero. And you can see that all of our tests are currently passing. If I go over here in the assert, and if I say that the balance has to be $100 when I create a bank account, and if I run this, then you will see that there's a problem, and it actually failed because the balance is not $100, balance is $0. Great. So this means that this is actually passing. That's perfectly fine. What else can we do with a bank account? We can obviously deposit some money in the bank account. We can withdraw some money from the bank account. So let's go ahead and create a different test. I'm going to go ahead and say when deposit amount into bank account XC And then you can say, oops, not sure why all of this is happening. Should deposit successfully. All right. In this case also, I need to go ahead and deposit some money to the bank account. So let bank account equals to bank account will create like this. Now I can go ahead and if I say bank account dot deposit and what do I want to deposit? I want to deposit $100. And if I deposit $100 into a bank account, then the balance has to be 100 because well, I deposit 100. So I can say XC assert equal. I'm going to assert that it's going to be 100 and the bank account dot balance, I'm asserting that it will be 100. Obviously, this is not really going to build successfully because there is no such thing as deposit. So let's go ahead into our bank account and we can create these functions. So I'm going to go ahead and create an extension on the bank account and I will call it deposit amount Amount can be anything, I guess. I can say double. And whenever we deposit some amount, we can actually go ahead and change self dot balance plus equals two, and then the amount. All right. Now we have already set up the let to be balance equals to zero. So this means that this may not be able to work because it's a let constant. So you can see over here. We can go ahead and fix that by calling it var. That's great. So that is done. And if we go ahead and run it again, you will see that we have to, that we're mutating it. So we have to call this mutating function. 
All right. Let's go ahead and send the amount, which is one hundred dollars. Let's go ahead and run this. Obviously, right now you can see that we are running uh, a different version, which is when creating the bank account, and we are not running this top one. So you can see that we can actually go ahead and say var over here. There we go. And if we want to run this particular test, I can simply copy this class and run it over here. Let's go ahead and run this. Obviously in the actual application, you will not be using playgrounds. You will be using separate targets for your unit tests, separate targets for your main project, and then UI testing and so on. So there we go. We have written our test, which has been able to successfully deposit $100 to the bank account. Now your challenge is to create a similar test or a feature, add a feature to the bank account, which will allow you to uh, withdraw some amount of money from the bank account. And you should only allow people to withdraw if they actually have that kind of a balance in the bank account. So if I have $100 and I try to withdraw $200, that will be rejected. All right. So this is the, our initial version of our uh, unit test. Now going back to this unit test, let me actually copy it over here. The old one when creating instance of bank account. We didn't really refactor these unit tests. You can see that we are creating an instance of bank account over here and we are creating an instance of bank account over here. Your unit tests are also code, so make sure that they are nice. So what we can do is we can implement a setup function and make sure this is a, this is a setup function uh, not on the class but on the instance, so kind of like this. The setup function is the function that is going to get called before each and every test. So setup function is going to get called and then your first test is going to get executed. Setup function is going to get called and your next test is going to get executed and so on. So what we want to do in the setup function is we want to make sure that we create a bank account. So I'm going to go ahead and create a property called bank account, which will be our bank account. And inside the setup function, I can actually go ahead and initialize the bank account. So bank account. So I don't have to do it again and again inside every single test. And my test is now much nicer and cleaner. It's still going to work the same because running each test or before running each of the tests, the setup is going to get fired and make sure that you call the super.setup also so that if it is initializing or it is inheriting, if our test is inheriting from some other test that is initialized. Now setup is called before running each test and there is another function which is called teardown, which we didn't really use, but the teardown is called after running each test. So we can actually say after each test, this is getting called. Now let's go ahead and run this and you will see that the, the, it works pretty much the same way. And you can see that over here we are printing out after each test and after each test since we have two tests. So teardown function is actually used if you want to clean up some resources. We, we don't really have any resources to clean up at this point but you can uh, close your file system or if you were inserting something in the database, you will remove that thing from the database in the teardown, all right? So this is a very basic introduction to test-driven development. And if you want to learn more about test-driven development, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I am currently working on a brand new course which will cover uh, unit testing and test-driven development in detail. If you are interested in supporting my uh, videos, then check out the links in the uh, description, the YouTube description. In the YouTube description, you can find the links to many of my different courses, including Swift UI, Declarative Interfaces, Mastering RX Swift, MVVM Design Pattern, uh, Mastering AR Kit, Intermediate and Advanced iOS, the Complete Guide to JSON Parsing, very important, 
Node.js if you are into web development and so much more. So if you are interested in supporting my channel, then check out my different courses. You might be actually interested in Swift UI course uh, and also subscribe to the, the channel because this is just a very introductory video on unit testing and I'm currently working on a course. So when the course is released, you will uh, get the notification if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, you will not get the notification. So make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please uh, write it in the comments.